to talk a little bit about uh, toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> And <laughs> give us a five-minute lesson yeah. on supply-side economics. Oh, wow. Okay. Five minutes on supply-side economics. Okay. <laughs> um, look, it, it, well, I'll, let me start it by this way. It, it's been proposed. I don't know if it's been passed. I haven't looked at the news fully this morning that a certain amount of money is going to be given to every American adult, whether it's $500, $1,000, whatever it is. And that this is this is going to stimulate the economy. And they said, and and there the quote I saw yesterday is, "We're going to move sooner rather than later." And my point that I was talking about uh, with with Ron about this was, well, wait a minute, isn't the problem the problem isn't that people don't have money right now? It's that they don't have money in the future. So sooner rather than later isn't going to help. But also. It's not a, it's, our problem is not demand, the, a lack of demand. Usually, Keynesian economics talks about the, stimulating the aggregate demand. The demand is still there. Our demand hasn't changed from two or three weeks ago. That has not changed at all. What's changed is the supply, right? So the supply, we can't, we can't supply the toilet paper as quickly as we once did. Uh, and I'm sure that there's going to be a, plenty of toilet paper in the stores re relatively shortly. Um, and I don't know how far down the rabbit hole we want to go, but this is one of the reasons why I believe in the free and unencumbered price system is that we would have to allow prices to really adjust. And if only we had allowed the prices to go up of toilet paper, we would not have seen the run that we saw. Of course, in I think 36 states, you can't have that because it's illegal to increase the price of any, any, anything by more than 10% without being considered gouging. Um, and it's a, it's a very complicated thing, but the, the nut of it is, is that as hard as this is to understand, it's supply that creates demand, right? It's supply that allows us to do this. And toilet paper is a great example. And I just watched this last night on this, this uh, YouTube channel called The History Guy. That was the history of toilet paper. Right? Toilet paper is, for the most part, less than 100 years old, <laughs> Far as I know, I mean, even if you're only going with the species emerging seven days, you know, at a, at a six days and a day of rest, right? That's still 6,000 years. So for 5,900 years, if even if, and I think it's longer than that, but we didn't have toilet paper. Well, now all of a sudden it's become the most important thing that we can possibly do. I mean, there are so many different possible substitutes. It's not even funny. In fact, this guy was talking about how toilet paper was originally a, considered a luxury and rejected. <laughs> it was rejected by those. It wasn't considered as cleanly as the other means. So interesting stuff, but it's supply, the supply of the toilet paper, the creation of it that ultimately creates the demand for it. And it's hard to understand because we normally see it the other way, but it's that, that's what really the economy in mind is about. This not, no, that knowledge is what creates new stuff and then creates demand down the line. And, and you hinted at this, the pricing system of, of the free market, uh, the, the, the pricing system, which is really information, right? Isn't mm -hmm. pricing information? How, how, does yes. that, how would that help us? Sure. And price is not only an incentive system. So the, and this is the other side of this, the economy is not only an incentive system, but it's an information system. And by that, I mean, is if prices are allowed to fluctuate, uh, say that toilet paper was allowed to double or even triple in, in, in price, that would send a signal down the line to the folks at, you know, Cottonelle or Charmin to bring a second or third production crew in, right? And you know, they, they can social distance in the factory, right? And supply more. And it, it would create that because the price would go up, the price would, the, that would, that would send the signal all the way on down the line to, hey, you need to bring more workers in to re resupply the toilet paper. And of course, this allows them to pay their workers it, because, and this is another lesson I know that, that you and I have talked about a number of times, but price justifies the future expenditure of cost. It's, the, it's not the other way around. And th that's, that's why allowing prices to fluctuate is so critical to the economy right now. And any attempt to interrupt that, I think is just making this situation worse.